Morning folks, Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School. What I thought we'd do today is we're going to build a travoy. And a travoy is a leveraging device to carry loads over distance. And travois have been used since ancient times with people, with dogs, as well as with horses to maneuver larger loads that could not be carried on your back. And you're taking advantage of a lever just like any other simple machine, you are levering the weight and then dragging that weight, which gives you the ability to carry much more than you would carry on your back. So in a situation like this where you have set up a base camp, you have operated there until you've depleted most of the resources in the area that you choose to deplete, thinking about resource management, firewood and things of that nature, and it's time to move your camp. Now, if you don't have the advantage of a sled like I have in the background, you may need to build something like a travoy to carry your load. You may have collected things by bushcrafting, hunting, and trapping along your way once you set your base camp up with your minimum kit. You may have gotten fur. You may have gotten meat. You may have built things that you want to carry with you to another camp. To accomplish that, you build a travoy. We're going to go through that today. Stay with me, guys. We'll get started. Now, optimally, what you're looking for here are poles that are about the size of your wrist so that they'll support a load and they won't be too heavy. You also want them to be of hardwood if possible because it will last longer. To make this thing lever correctly or to take advantage of leverage with the load, you're going to want these poles to be twice as long as you are tall. So looking at this sapling standing on the ground and I'm this tall, I need to make sure that it's at least twice that tall. And I can pretty much guesstimate that and say that it is. So this is a perfect candidate for our first sapling. Okay, so what we've done here is we've collected our two long poles and I've collected four pieces for cross members. We'll talk about how to assemble this in just a minute. Let's talk about a couple measurements real fast. We need one pole on the front of this travoy that's going to be a little bit wider than our body and that's going to be a push pole. We're going to adapt this for human use. I'm not going to use this with a horse or a dog or a goat or anything like that, which I could do, but for this demonstration we're going to use this for a person. So I want a push pole in the front that I can put my hands on or just lean it against my belly and walk. I could even tuck it into my belt, tuck my belt around it, lash it to my waist, whatever the case may be, I want something in the front. So that pole needs to be a little bit wider than my body or about like this. Now I want something in the back of the travoy and the travoy has to be a triangular type shape. So we're going to adopt things that were used back in the early days and we're also going to adopt things like the Roycroft pack frame when we're building our travoy. We're going to make an exaggerated pack frame in a lot of ways. So we're going to use some methods of pack frames to make this travoy and I'm sure they did the same thing back in the day. So what I want to do is I want another pole or my longest pole in the back to be at least half again or twice as long as my front pole. So that the back of my travoy is twice as wide as the front of my travoy. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our longest pole that we've got here and that's going to be the back of our travoy and we're going to lash this on. But what we're going to do to do that is for stability's sake we're going to notch the poles so that this sits down into notches and then is lashed on to give it side to side and durability going this direction as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my first pole and I want the big end to the back. I'm going to slide it up on top of my pack here. I'm going to use my pack as kind of a sawhorse. And I'm going to put my arm on here from the elbow to my fingertips and I'm going to score a mark in there at about that location. And I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite pole 
to make sure that I get them even. Just like that. Now I'm going to notch these poles out. To do that, I'm just going to saw down in there less than halfway, about one third of the way. And I want that notch to be as wide as my longest pole. So I'll back up from it just a little bit like that to mark my spot and cut that in as well about one third of the way. Once we have our notch cleaned out, we'll have to do the exact same thing to our other side. And you can see that fits in there pretty snug and we're gonna have a little overhang. I'm not going to notch this piece because it's already a fairly small diameter. I don't wanna take any strength out of it by taking wood out of this piece. I just want to notch one side to give it a little less side to side movement once I lash it in there. And we'll do the same thing to our second pole. Now, if you're afraid to do that with your knife, you probably got the wrong knife. Just saying. Then you can clean the rest of that notch out of there pretty fast. When you're working with green wood like this, you gotta have sharp tools because a dull tool is not gonna cut this green wood very well. You can see how this knife will just scrape shavings out of there just like an actual wood working tool. And that's what's important about having a good, sharp, heavy duty knife that you can beat on and not worry about it. So to lash our poles together, and we wanna leave just a little bit of stick out there, we're going to just do a typical cross lash and we're going to start with what's called a timber hitch, which means we're gonna fold a bite in the line. And I've got one pole of line, one full arm length of line off my roll. And I'm going to take a bite in the line just like this, and I'm going to twist it about five times. And when I do that, I'm going to take the other end of my line, come up over my log, and put this line through the loop just like this. What that's going to do is it's going to create a self-biting loop just like this that I can then pull on and tighten up. And again, I'm going to go around three times here real quick. And then I'm going to use a toggle and wrap it around the line three or four or five times, just like this, and pull it as tight as I can get it. Just like that. Once I've done that, I'm going to come under this piece and I'm going to lash the other direction three times, like this. Again, taking this toggle and pulling it as tight as I can pull it. Now I want to end this with a clove hitch. So I'm going to come over this two times, just like this, and that creates a cross right there. And this line goes right through that cross. And if I do that correctly, and sometimes you got to fish around with it a little bit to feed it through the cross, squeeze that together and pull on it, that's going to be a clove hitch. If you left yourself enough room to get a bite with your toggle, which I didn't, one pull wasn't quite enough line. It was a guesstimation, but it wasn't quite enough. When I pull on this, it'll tighten this up. <clears throat> that's gonna stay okay, that's not a problem. Next time I'll give myself about a pull and a half to give myself a little bit longer tag. I'm gonna go ahead and tie just a stop knot in this real quick, right there at the base, so that it can't come undone. The trick to lashings is you wanna make sure that you can get them off if you need to. If you wanna recover the cordage, if you have to retie or anything like that, you don't wanna to have to cut the cordage. You wanna be able to recover it. And that is a typical cross lash.
now that we have the back stick on our travoy we're going to come up to the front and figure out how wide we're going to be here and where we want our push stick and our push stick needs to be pretty close to the end of our travoy stays here but not all the way to the front so i'm going to back it up a couple inches and i'm going to notch it and lash it exactly like i did the back one-third of this travoy is going to be the load-bearing area. So now I'm going to have to put two more cross members in spaced evenly from the bottom one and lash those in to give me my load-bearing space. So whatever, however wide I make this is going to dictate the amount of equipment that I can tie or lash to this travoy. But I don't want to go beyond the one-third mark or I'm going to counteract my leverage of the weight. So this looks pretty good right here. I'll go ahead and cut these notches in and lash this together. We've got all of our cross beams lashed now. The last thing we want to do is we want to put angles or flats on the bottom of our travoy skids just about this long and all that's going to do is avoid a little bit of friction. Instead of pulling around you're going to be pulling a flat surface. It only makes a difference over long distance. Then I want to explain a couple other things about this travoy to you before we go from this video. Stay with me guys. Now there are a couple things that we did in our design here that we did on purpose. I'm going to show how to pack and employ this Travoy in the next episode of Pathfinder TV. But what I'll tell you is the reason that these cross members have stick outs on them is so that they're multifunctional. This one in the front can be used as a hand brace if I want to carry it here instead of here. It can also be used as a lashing point if I were to put a waist strap or a tump line set up on this travoy. And I'll show you that on the next episode of Pathfinder TV. All of the cross members on the back have stick out on them as well so that they can be used for lashing points instead of having to use a toggle situation. Now I can put toggles on the rungs horizontally. I can put a couple toggles on there to help tie off. But as far as linear, I don't need toggles because I've got that stick out and that becomes my lashing toggle point. So you can see that a travoy could be a very handy item, especially if you were dragging game or something like that, or taking a large load from one camp area to another. Obviously, you'd want to go scout that camp area first, decide where you're going to go, come back to your camp, pack your equipment and move, and that's exactly what we're going to do on the next episode of Pathfinder TV. I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School. I thank you for joining me out here for this video today. I thank you for your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, our family, our business, all my instructors, affiliates, sponsors, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.